In UI UX design, web programming in general, and responsive processes in particular, navigation tabs are an extremely important part that help users easily manipulate and navigate to important places. In this video, let's join Lindev to create an extremely beautiful and impressive nav tab animation for mobile like on the current screen. To do this project, we will use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I have prepared two files html and css i format the html and embed the css file here in addition i will embed the font awesome library so we can insert icons into the design and this is our current website because i only make nav tab for mobile i will move it to the iphone pro screen to experience it according to html5 rules the nav element must be used to create its functionality inside the nav contains the you will tag to initialize the list with each lead tag corresponding to a nav item. In each lead tag, use the i tag with the solid house class to insert the house icon. Similarly, I continue to insert other icons for the following items. By default, there is always an item in active state. I will select the item in the middle and insert an active class here. Through CSS, first in the body I set margin 0. The minimum height must be equal to the full height of the current screen. Use a background image that is a GIF image to create emphasis. Put the background in the middle. Adjust the size to fit the screen. Next is the nav class. First I will change the color of the icon to white, so we can easily see it. Move this element using position. With fixed nav will always be fixed at a specific location on the screen. It is 0 pixels from the left margin of the screen, 0 pixels from the right margin, and 0 pixels from the bottom margin. Do you often write like this? Try replacing it with ESET, with the initial value being top right bottom and left. If not, set top then leave it to auto. Gives a white bottom border with a size of 20 pixels. With 500 pixels and must not exceed 100% of the current screen width. Or you can write more concisely by putting these two values in min. Their results will be the same. There is a parameter that I will reuse many times. So I will create a variable named width height item with a value of 60 pixels. From now on when I need to use the value 60 pixels, I will call this variable name directly. Next is the OOL tag, which contains the list of items. Set padding and margin to zero. Use display grid to divide columns. I will divide it into five columns. Each column has a width of 60 pixels, which means I will use the variable width height item instead of writing 60 pixels directly here. Along with that, it is divided into only one row, and this row is also 60 pixels in size. Because after dividing the columns, Depending on how big or small the screen is, we will have a certain amount of extra space. Use justify content space between to divide the columns evenly. As for Lee item tags, use display flex to align the position. Justify content center to center horizontally. Align item center to center vertically. The default font size is 16 pixels. Use transition to specify how long the animation lasts when the item is active. When the item is active, it will be moved up 10 pixels. Pause CSS here for a moment. We will move on to using JavaScript to activate any item. First, I will need to recall the HTML elements I need to work with. The nav element. Inside the nav element, I will get the list of items which are the lay elements. Since there is more than one element, I will use query selector all. Use a loop to get the entire list of items out. When the user clicks on an item, it immediately runs a processing function. In this function, I will add the active class to the item itself to activate its status. It worked. But remember that only one item is active at a time. So before activating a new item, I will find the previously activated item, if it exists, delete the active class of that item. So it worked! The 
The next thing is to create a white background effect. So right in the nav tag, I create a class effect to create a white background effect. The circle class will create a circle surrounding the position of the active item. Coming to CSS. Continuing in the nav, I will create another variable named position x active, used to store the position value of the item being active. For example, if the distance from the left margin to the active item is 170 pixels, I set this variable to a value of 170 pixels. Of course, this is only a temporary value for us to do with CSS, and its real value will be processed later with JavaScript. Start designing the effect using position absolute to align the position. With this 100% of the size of the nav, the distance from the left margin is zero, bottom margin is zero. Height will be 10 pixels higher than the height of the items. For example, I gave it a black background. Everyone will see that it is lying on top of all the items. So how can we manipulate it? Let's add Z index minus one to bring it after the items. Finally, overflow hidden is used to specify that if any animation effect that goes beyond this size frame will be cut off. Now, in the effect element, I create a virtual before element within it. Use position absolute to align the position, left and bottom zero pixels. Height will be equal to the height value of each item. Width will be equal to the left margin distance to the active item position. That is, the value of the position x active variable. Background is white. For a before element to work, we need to declare content. Because currently the icon color and background color are both white. I will change the icon color to white to make it easier to see. Next, I rounded its upper right corner. Subtract 10 pixels to create some distance from the active item. For elements that will change when another item is activated, I will add the transition attribute to specify the transition time for it. Likewise, I create an after element to color the background on the right side. Keep using position absolute to move the position. This time it will be zero pixels away from the right and bottom margins. The other parameters are almost the same as what we did with the before element. As for width, to get the remaining size, we subtract the size of the before element from 100%. Subtract the width of each item. Finally, subtract another 10 pixels to create a distance from the active item. Round the upper left border. So we have just created the background for both sides. When the position X active value is changed, the position of this background color will also change. Because the after element will also change, I will also add a transition to regulate the time to create the animation effect for it. Finally, let's come to the circle class that covers the active item. It will have width and height equal to the value of the item being active. The background is white. Its left position coincides with the position of the currently active item. Round the four corners to form a circle. Use box shadow to create a shadow. Transition to specify the animation creation time. You will see that our image is not in the center. Don't worry, that's because the current position x active variable value is just what we thought it was not accurate. In class circle, I continue to create virtual element before. Use position to move it. It will be minus 10 pixels away from left. Right minus 10 pixels away. Declare content so it can work. Try making the background red so you can see it. Round the four corners 50%. Here, I use white box shadow with blur parameter zero to not be blurred. Now I don't need the half red color. I turn the red color into a transparent color. Continue creating a little distance from the top circle. I set the distance from the bottom to minus 10 pixels. And of course, it will also be declared transition. Because these elements all have properties related to size and position that depend on the position x active variable. When the variable value changes, they will also be changed. Now we will use JavaScript to determine the exact value of the position x active variable. First, after initialization, I find out which item is active by default. If it exists, I call the nav element. Using set property to change the value of the variable position x active 
The position of the active item is inner left. Don't forget to add the pixel unit behind. It worked! Everything was in balance. Similarly, when the user clicks on any item, in addition to that item being activated, we will also change the position x active variable value to equal the position of the newly activated item. To create a transition effect, moves according to the activated item. It worked well. It's beautiful, right? This design makes our application look much more professional. And this is also the entire content of this video. If you find it interesting, don't forget to click please like and subscribe to my channel to support me. Thank you very much everyone. See you in the next video.